Hi everybody, Johnny here, another vlog, and today we're talking about Ghost of Tsushima, which we just finished on our streams on Twitch, and we got the Director's Cut Edition with the Iki Island DLC, which turned out to be quite good, and I want to talk a, a little bit about my experience with the game without going into any spoilers today, just to share with you what sort of journey it's been to play this, and... We started playing this quite a long time ago, about the time when it came out. We did a few streams on it and I quickly decided I didn't want to play it on stream. I wanted to kind of take my personal time with it because it's, it's a game where, you know, just going out for a run with your horse in silence is, is a joy, right? Enjoying the surroundings, the little sounds and all that. So I quickly decided it wasn't really something I wanted to stream. But fast forward to recently, the multiplayer came out that was a little bit ago, and I played that with Rijaku and Karak from ACG. We had a great time playing that. And that kind of revived my excitement for the game, and I went back into the campaign which I had left halfway through and uh, actually finished it on stream. I decided at that time, you know what? This is something I'm really excited for. I want to share that on stream. And it turned out to be a great decision. We, you know, we've been having a great time with this. So not only we finished the base game, loved it. And then we moved on to the Iki Island DLC, which had already come out. And it, I, I went into it quite skeptical, right? Because DLCs for games like these have the big challenge of differentiating themselves from the base game in some way. If it's truly just more of the same, I, I think that for a lot of people that would be a failing for a DLC. It feels like a DLC needs to have a bit of an identity, doesn't it? If you guys remember in Horizon Zero Dawn, they did an excellent DLC with snow. So the, the whole identity of the, of the DLC was that it was a snowy area with sort of different creatures as a result and different things to explore. I think that's the juice for a DLC. It has to have that little something that's just slightly different than the setting of the main game. And the way Ghost tries to do it in Iki Island is in a couple of ways. One, the setting is predom the vegetation is much more predominant. It's kind of like the whole island is overrun by vegetation in some way. Uh, almost supernaturally so. And it gives it a very a quite unique look compared to the original. And they're also much more colorful with the skybox, I found. I found at times it, it almost looked like a painting. And an element of that too is that you're tripping balls in the DLC because you're basically given some kind of poison that gives you hallucinations and forces you to face your inner demons and memories of your dad and all that stuff uh daddy issues um but that allows them to do crazy stuff with colors and things like that because you're in the middle of this trip even when you're out of it, it it's not clear what of the experience is being affected by that sort of poison thing so i think that gives it that little edge to differentiate the setting from the base game and the story in the dlc is quite short i will say if you're expecting something long you may be disappointed here i would rate the dlc overall as an okay dlc the the band you're facing uh, or the band of warriors you're facing is rather forgettable in my opinion although it, it does give a little bit more color to your memories of your dad and you learn a bit more about the the backdrop of Jin as a character and his dad you learn a bit more in the base game we already get hints that our dad maybe wasn't quite the the man we thought he was um, I'm not gonna say whether for bad uh, or good but he turned out to be something a little different than what we remembered initially and he, that gets solidified and a little more color gets added to it in the DLC. So that's something to take from it. But I will say the main reason to play 
the DLC is because you love the game. If you love the base game, like I did, it's a great thing to jump into and sink your teeth into some of these extra quests as well that you get, some uh, different skins that you can unlock. For me, that's also the juice in the game. It's all the different skins. In fact, there is this uh, system in the game which instead of having actual markers on screen, what you have is the wind guiding you, isn't it? It's a, a very unique, and I don't know why nobody has done this before them that I know of, but you have this system where the wind is guiding you towards your objective and you can unlock different winds that will guide you to different things. So for example, one of the winds could guide you to new costumes and I love that. I would turn that on and I would just lose myself in running with my horse towards unlocking these different cosmetics and things like that. That was dope. You could also, you know, find other stuff with with these different whims that I thought was a great touch. And what a nice way to remove the clutter from the screen. It, what a better way than to just integrate it into something that's already there naturally, like the wind and it's done well it's done subtly while also giving you enough information to stay on track so great i mean just big kudos to them on the hud in general not only the wind but the hud overall is quite clean they they have like a clean design aesthetic to all of their menus that synergizes well with the samurai look with the oriental look they're going for Everything is, is like ink on white, like black ink on white, on a white canvas. It looks great. And the whole thing works well. I think for me, the big surprise is how much I enjoyed the combat in this damn thing. Because most times in open world games, and I'm looking at you, AC, Odyssey, Origin, and Valhalla, I like those games. And the setting is incredible. The worlds they build are amazing, right? They're amazing, guys. But this is a game that not only has an amazing setting and world building, but the combat is actually fucking good. It's good. It's deep. And it, it can go as deep as you like, mechanically speaking. If you're someone who really enjoys getting into it and being technical with the parries and responding properly, you can do that, you can get into it and become really good at that. Uh, if you're someone who prefers to make the combat more accessible, you have access to all sorts of things like bombs, projectiles, and other, other shit you can use to have more ways of tackling combat that doesn't necessarily involve being good at parrying or timings and things like that. So it just gives you so many options to play the game the way you want it and it never requires you to do one specific thing outside of duels which are a bit more you know uh strictly guided like you have to play the duel in a certain way to to win for the most part but all the combat outside of that is really free and you have this the impression that you have this endless toolkit at your disposal to tackle any situation that comes your way and in terms of accessibility too, not only can you make it more accessible by using all these tools at your disposal, but you have difficulty levels and they're well implemented in this. So you have you can go easier if you like. I played most of it in medium and it felt quite easy for my taste, but I enjoyed it. Um, I, I wasn't really after a super technical challenge for this one. So I enjoyed medium difficulty, but there are higher difficulties as well. And there is one, I believe, which is almost like a glass cannon where you basically kill people in one hit, uh, but you also die very quickly. So it's almost like a trade-off in a glass cannon style of gameplay that would really change how the game plays out. And I might try that out, actually, in New Game Plus and see how, how, it, how it kind of plays out. But I'm really... I don't think I have much negative to say about this. You know, after my time with it, there have been a couple times when uh, I've, I've been looking for evidence in an investigation quest and I couldn't quite find it. That got a little annoying. 
or I was looking for one remaining enemy in the area and he was hidden in the house. And so there were like a few annoyances like that, but really they pale in comparison to all the good shit that this has to offer. For me, one of the best games in the current times, in the current generation of gaming. And if I had to say one game for you to pick up and play on PlayStation, whether it's the PS4 original or PS5, it's this. By the way, the footage you've been seeing in the video is from our live streams. If you think that looks great and you want to be a part of it, join us every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday over on Twitch. Links for that in the description down below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.